Well, welcome back. You know, it's been a nice long weekend. I had a whole pile of honeydews to do. <laughs> I decided, what the heck, I'll just throw together a, a mishmash video in between all that stuff. There was no way I could get back in the house and really do any radio work, but now we're able to do some. And keep in mind, up until now, we have done no repair and no restoration work. So that's why the videos went, you know, rapid fire, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to get through the rip down and the tear down part so we could start, you know, working on the actual restoration of things, which is going to be a much, much slower process. I figured out how to open these things. You know, it just took a matter of uh, placing the edge of a, a screwdriver against it, holding it in place with one hand, and tapping on the end of the handle with the other with a, uh, a, a heavy screwdriver. And I did that, I, you know, I, I tapped, I kept it in place. Now, you don't want to use a small, tiny screwdriver for this because it'll go up underneath the lip and bend the lip. And you don't want that. It'll look really funky. So you, I, I turned it, tapped it, turned it, tapped it, and eventually it broke it loose to where now I can just remove it with my hands. See there? Look at there. Isn't that cool? It was just pressure fitted on there, which is kind of neat. Now we have to remove the bolt. Incidentally, this is T4, for those of you who might be uh, wondering. T4, the IF transformer. And it's got the white and the brown and the green wire coming out of it. You can see that very clearly here. And there's the white right here. This one, the, the uh, brown is over here and the green is in the center. White, brown, and green. Okay, we've got the nut off the bottom. Now let's see if we can gently get this thing to fall out of there. Push on the little nut on or the, the bolt on the bottom of my finger. The wires catch a little bit, so you got all right. There we go. Look at there. Looky looky. Looks like they got a roll of toilet paper or a toilet paper roll around that thing, it's all coming apart. We're gonna have to do something different on that. Let's get it off of there. Let us get it off of there. This is just an insulator. They insulate it from the inside of the metal can. They don't want anything touching the inside of the metal can. So they used cardboard, which was quick and easy. Wow, look at that thing. Pretty mangy looking. Oh my goodness, check this out. Woohoo, let me get the light over here. Check this out. My goodness sakes, we got to show you this. Look at this brown wire. This brown wire apparently comes straight out of the right out of the coil. Well, that sucks. I'm gonna have to splice onto that now. Look, look what's going on here. I don't know if you can see. Let me back up and zoom in. Maybe I hope you can see that. That brown wire was wrapped around there like that and got flattened and uh, <coughs> flattened and squashed. When it was put inside this can, let me get a pencil here. Man, this is kind of cool. I wonder if this thing even worked at all. Let me see. Yeah, look at here. Look at here. That right there is a flattened wire. It got flattened when that can was put together and the nut placed on the end of that. Look at that. Look how flat that is. Let me see if there's any bare wire. Yep, son of a gun. Look at there. There's some bare wire right there. Just you can barely make it out. Bare wire out that was pressing against the bottom of this can. Well, I'll bet some. You know, I, I wonder. I wonder if that's why that large uh, electrolytic capacitor was at the bottom of that radio when I first opened it up. Trying to compensate for the noise that this was causing. Holy mackerel, look at that thing totally flattened out. The insulation squished so bad that the wire is showing. Interesting! The bottom plate of the two capacitors, now the two capacitors are these adjustable things on top. One right there, you know, they're the trimmer capacitors. The things with the two screws you see on top, side by side there. The bottom plate of both capacitors is supposed to be connected to ground right here these two capacitors come together and they're supposed to be connected to ground not a problem there 
because it is connected to ground. Let me get over here. Both of those, uh, this bottom plate is connected to ground all the way down through that screw all the way to the bottom. Now I've got the multimeter hooked up to the screw on the bottom and I'll touch the bottom of the plate. Watch the meter. See it? See, it's, it's connected to ground, okay? When the nut goes on here and it goes, to, goes through the can and the nut goes on and it gets screwed to the chassis, that's how they establish the ground. All right, we're good to go so far on that. However, look what we've got coming out of the top of this can. I thought there was only one wire. I had them twisted together, but lo and behold, there are two wires coming out of there. One from here and one here. Let's see if you can see that better with the light off. I don't know. No, I guess not. You have one here and one here, and they're clamped together underneath this black... I don't know what it is. It looks like a piece of uh, maybe... I'm going to go ahead and take it off of there with my thumb here. There it is. Get that stuff broken off. Yeah, see they're clamped together right there. There's a little metal clamp. They're wired together right there, but they're not touching one another. I ohmed them out between the two wires. Neither one of them are touching one another. Now, I went to the drawing, or the picture that I had downloaded. Now, I remember I told you all about that it's always good to have good documentation. Here's the wire coming up out of that can and this silver part right here this is the wire wrapped around the wire that goes to the grid cap. I'm going to check with uh, Brendan on this one. He may have seen one of these before. I just fired off a uh, <coughs> an email to Brendan about that issue you know which is another lesson for the newbies and for folks that sometimes just don't know the answer. Don't be afraid to ask someone else who might know. Don't plunge ahead blindly and possibly wreck something or destroy something because you didn't take the time to ask, okay? This, you know, we're all in this hobby together, folks. You know, Don't be afraid to ask people. All right, while we're waiting for Brendan to come back with a, a studious answer on my problem, I discovered that the bottom of this uh, of this uh, IF coil is loose. All this stuff is dried up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little alcohol out of here. I'm going to kind of clean it up real good, and then we're going to super glue it together. And later on, I'll cover the entire thing with that Q-dope, or not Q-dope, but uh, Corona dope. I'm going to put some good old Corona dope all the way around on there with a small brush. That'll seal it up good. Now when you work on something like this, you know, you go ahead and you put your uh, brush down in your uh, alcohol. You don't want to be slopping it all over there, you know, just kind of dry it off on the towel a little bit, which is another thing. I always recommend you work on a towel. Keeps little screws and nuts from rolling off and getting lost. Anyway, give it a good cleaning and let it make sure it dries. You can use a can of air to lightly dry it when you're done. Just kind of get the dirt off. I'm trying to get the dirt off so the glue will uh, get a better bind. Okay, get the dirt off is all I'm doing. Very lightly, very lightly. You know, you want to be very, very careful with these IF coils. Screw one up, you're out of business. That's it. You know. All right, here we go. We're going to take the old super glue gel. We're going to spread it around in there. More of a filler than anything else. Kind of squeeze it down in the hole if you can to crack. We want that thing to be perfectly solid when we get done. You may have to wait for it to dry and then turn it and go to the next section. Take your time. I like this stuff here, this uh, super glue gel with the squeeze things on the side. Boy, it just makes life a whole lot easier. Squeeze it on around there. The rest of these cracks and everything you see here will be filled in by the Corona Dope. All right, we'll let that set for a while and come back and finish the bottom side. All right, I'll tell you what, while that thing there is drying with the super glue, I think I'll try to bang out or press out some of these dents in this thing. Gosh, it's in terrible condition. Some of it goes down and presses out. I'll have to, I'm going to use the butt of my screwdriver because it's nice and smooth. I don't want to use any metal if I can help it. So what I'll do is keep working my way, just pressing it down like that and maybe tapping on the end of it with another screwdriver you know on this end here as I kind of work my way around there 
See if we can get it at least somewhat smooth. And it took a little bit of tapping here and tapping there, and I had to use three the butts of three different uh, a spin tie and a, and a couple of and a smaller a screwdriver. You know, this thing down in there like that, and tap 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 with a tapped on the end. And this one here was real flat on the bottom, so I really liked that. So I was able to get up it, you know, closer to the edge. And it doesn't look all that bad. I'll tell you what, it was all beat to pieces, but I think I managed to get, you know, 98% of those dents out and make it look halfway smooth. And it fits on the can. That was the thing I was most concerned about, is it fits on the can real good. Okay? So she fits on there good. So I, that looks pretty darn good compared to what we have. Once I think once I get it cleaned up, it'll look a whole lot better than it does right now. Meanwhile, I got an answer back from Brendan about that uh, second wire you see right here. I'm only supposed to have one wire coming out of here and going into that grid of the 58 tube. And give me, and uh, here's what Brendan wrote. He says, uh, I think you'll find that it was a factory fix for interference that was being picked up by the wire and fed into the grid of the 58 tube. That makes sense. So yeah, that's what it is. It's just a, kind of a quick way to fix a noise problem. I'm glad I ran into that. I've seen it before, but never coming out of an IF can. Wow. Okay, we're going to let the glue dry all night. And then we're going to, tomorrow, uh, we're going to go ahead and put the three, uh, all four uh, wires on here. It's going to take a little bit of doing, but we're going to get rid of the green, the white, and the brown, what's left of them. We're going to put brand new wires in there and get them all soldered up. We're going to put these on there. We're going to have a bunch of long wires coming out of the bottom of this can. Anyway. Once we get them spliced on and get them soldered up, we'll put the black ones on. Uh, I may discuss this with uh, Brendan one more time. Maybe I can go ahead and wrap a wire external to the can, and then uh, you know, and then ground it externally instead of on the inside. I don't know. I don't think it would make much difference. I mean, I could wrap it around the wire right here and then just run it to a grounding point on the chassis. I don't need to ground it to the inside of the the inside of the uh, IF coil. Can. I don't I just don't think so. We'll see we'll see.